the truth about dating advice from women. I've seen many young guys make this critical mistake. They search the internet for relationship advice from women and female dating gurus. I can tell you that ladies have no idea what they want. They are not logical like us, they have not sat quietly and thoughtfully and chosen what they like and dislike. They are at the mercy of their emotions and what they are feeling. Feminists consider this an insult, claiming that men attempt to instruct us on choosing our love partners and pastimes. Some men will agree with her, but only two types of men will agree with her, orbiters who just revolve around a person but never really land on it and beautiful men who women have never rejected. You can tell when ladies are appalled by you. These males have never experienced rejection or contempt, so they believe women act the same way as everyone. Make the same jokes and provide every guy-friendly hug and cheek kiss as she does to her cute-looking friend. It's simply not true. If you want to know what ladies desire, you should listen to people who weren't born gorgeous. As a result, they altered some aspects of themselves, increasing their sexual value. You should seek guidance from a bisexual woman because she is the only gender who agrees with men on the difficulty of dating females. When you receive their counsel, you must implement it because you know the other ideas that will produce outcomes. Not the meaningless be yourself or be nice and make me feel special cliché. Let's talk about it some more. The most obvious example is when women say, oh, I don't like strong men. It's been said so many times that it's become a cliché. Oh, I'm not a fan of men with massive arms. Women have no notion of what muscle is, they believe that the 185-pound slim man they see in movies is how attractive men look. Muscle refers to the hulkyish masses seen on the Olympic stage. Worse, if you ask some girls, they will tell you she enjoys dead bodies. Two things are going on here. The first is that she dislikes the dad bod since she is constantly striving for the most exotic and highest measure of fitness abs for her or the rock-hard torso that you obtain with an unusually low amount of fat. She only sees them on the internet because they don't exist outside of extreme lighting, cosmetics, dehydration, and Photoshop. If you ask her who she thinks has the best dad bod, she'll point to a guy with a skinny tummy. The second is when women say this to avoid appearing shallow or hurting sentiments because it's extremely evident that women don't like slim guys. Hollywood's highest paid sex icons are tall, strong women with fantastic bodies. Look at what they do and the men they yearn over. Does she date skinny geeks if she says she doesn't like muscular guys or does she like the person with an excellent diet and regular gym regimen since she presumably believes that's our normal state? We don't need to spend hours in the gym to look like that for the men they're sleeping with from high school to marriage. They will prefer fit, healthy guys with good muscle mass if they are attractive. In reality, women place a high value on fitness and being fit automatically elevates you from a creep to a gentleman in her eyes. Even rich guys who hire unfit hookers are considered predatory creeps. She will seek clout with them, but at every opportunity, she will gripe about it, play the victim, and believe he took advantage of her. However, those women do not feel the same about wealthy actors and attractive millionaires. In today's society, Appearance is often seen as one of the most important aspects of a person's life. For women, this is especially true. From a young age, girls are taught that their looks are the most important thing about them. The media perpetuates this message, which bombards women with images of thin, beautiful models who always seem to have perfect hair and makeup. As a result, many women feel immense pressure to live up to these unrealistic standards. They may diet obsessively, spend hours in front of the mirror, or even undergo dangerous cosmetic procedures in an attempt to achieve perfection. That's how important appearance is. Women also claim that they dislike traditionally masculine guys. This also means a variety of things. For starters, they have demonized manly men. A truly manly guy devotes himself to his wife and expects her to devote herself to him. He doesn't want her playing around with her guy pals and wearing inappropriately, yet that intimidates ladies. They do not wish to embrace modesty or live with limitations because society has provided them with a life free of repercussions. 
She might also claim she prefers feminine males, and if you ask her what that means, she might point to someone like Mads Mikkelsen. He is a tall and gorgeous man with all the physical traits of a high-value man, possibly because he appears gentle and playful in a few interviews. She isn't attracted to his feminine behavior, she is attracted to his masculinity and position, which she uses as a crutch because God forbids women from admitting that they prefer a man who is macho and gorgeous. That will put their entire plan to shame. Masculinity, unfortunately for them, cannot escape primordial desires. Many of the partnerships that women consider to be perfect are the ones she fantasizes about. You won't believe it, but women spend hours fantasizing about and falling in love with fake men. These males have all the feel-good chemicals but none of the hard labor that men have. They fantasize about having a sexy harem without having to work for it. She wants a high-value man who pampers her and expects nothing in return. So it succeeded because humans have defects and require mutual effort to stay together. However, do you see the hypocrisy here? Interestingly, they often desire a person who will serve them, but they don't want to return the favor. They want someone who will be there for them when they need you but don't want to be there for you when you need them. They want someone who will listen to them, but they don't want to listen to us. They want someone who will support them, but they don't want to support us. This hypocrisy is evident in many aspects of their lives, from personal relationships to political choices. It's time for them to start being honest with themselves and admitting that they can't have what they want without also giving back. Otherwise, they're just taking advantage of others, and that's not fair or right. And I guess doing that is a bit difficult for them. If so, gents, if ever you really want a woman in your life, be careful with choosing. Visualizing fictitious males is not only common but men are also told to be like that in order to do everything for her and think of her as an angel simply for existing. I mean, she's a person, so why should I treat her like a queen when she can't even cook me delicious food? No male is concerned about the money his wife brings home or her financial situation. I know I don't care, but he does care about what she did for him and how she cares for her children and his home. Society's definition of gender roles has changed dramatically over the course of history, and it continues to evolve at a rapid pace. This can be both good and bad, depending on how you look at it. On the one hand, it leads to greater equality between men and women, as well as greater acceptance of people who don't conform to traditional gender norms, which of course, is considered good news for feminists. On the other hand, it can be overwhelming to keep up with the ever-changing expectations, and it can be difficult to create lasting change when the definition of what is considered normal is constantly shifting. Ultimately, only time will tell whether society's evolving definition of gender roles is a positive or negative development. Society does not want men to recognize that all they want is a nice woman who serves hot tasty food for them and is loyal when they return home. That's all there is to it. Western guys would give their lives for a wife like this. Look at what she does to see how far Western society has sunk. Okay, she says many things and wishes for circumstances she fantasizes about, but she doesn't want it to be true. She won't like it since she always imagines things as if she were a child, never considering the facts of the situation. And how scary would it be to bring a child into a world like that? It is important for children to grow up in a healthy environment. This means having access to clean air and water, fresh fruits and vegetables, and safe places to play. It also means being surrounded by people who care about their well-being. When children are raised in an unhealthy environment, they are more likely to suffer from health problems such as asthma, obesity, and diabetes. They are also more likely to develop behavioral problems, such as ADHD and aggression. In contrast, children who grow up in a healthy environment are more likely to be physically and emotionally well-adjusted. They are also more likely to perform well in school and go on to lead successful lives. For all of these reasons, it is essential that we do everything we can to ensure that our children have access to a healthy environment. So if you're selfish and only think about yourself, please, think wisely. Ultimately, her aspirations are nothing more than nostalgic dreams, 
but she will parade them around as if they are what she desires, and weak men will strive to give her that every day. They will dress femininely around her, wear pink, and bring her things to eat while she craps all over them. Nerds will hang out with her and thin gentlemen who will complete her homework and assist her when she is struggling. She'll cry over his shoulder, shake her hand, and sleep with the jock the next night. Women do this to slim men, obese men, feminine men, geeky men, and all other types of men. She imagines a really nice rule that you should keep in mind when navigating female desires. The best predictor of someone's future behavior is her past behavior. Look at her track record if you want to know the truth about what she says or claims. See where she comes from if she's all about the feminist lifestyle and despises toxic masculinity. Where does her father's money come from, and is he one of those toxic males? What men she dated in the past and her body counts are all you need to make an opinion of her. She isn't a dude, so it's hard for her to understand, and maybe she lacks sympathy. Men are more than their appearance. The tiny nerd may turn out to be a boxer who beats you to a pulp. Too often, men are judged solely on their appearance. Whether it's in the workplace or in social situations, first impressions count for a lot, and unfortunately, many men are judged harshly based on how they look. While it's true that appearance is important, it's far from the only thing that matters. Men are more than their looks, they're also their hobbies, their passions, and their values. What a man looks like on the outside doesn't necessarily reflect who he is on the inside. So next time you see a man, don't judge him solely on his appearance. There's more to him than meets the eye. Ladies are simple, you just need to look past their appearance and see what she does to learn everything about them, so quit listening to women and focus solely on their actions. That's all for today, I hope you've learned something from these videos. Please subscribe to One Male if you haven't already, and I'll see you all shortly. MegTow is a growing movement that more and more men are subscribing to. But what is it? In this video, I break down the basics of MegTow and why it's gaining popularity.